to sit there and look in the mirror and tell yourself, I am no longer sober, is a feeling of isolation. I cannot explain in words. about the addict who has relapsed. You are worthy of treatment. You are worthy of receiving help. You're not a failure. You're not. You are not a disappointment. You have a right to treatment. It doesn't matter how long you were sober before you relapsed. It doesn't matter for how long your relapse was. It doesn't matter with the drugs you used during your relapse. You have a right to treatment. You are more than your addiction. You are more than your relapse. And don't let the world look down on you. And don't let it affect you. You are not a horrible person because you relapsed. And the world will try to tell you that. The world will look at you when you relapse and they'll look at you in shame. They'll look at you in disappointment. And they'll, they'll have a tone of, oh, you relapsed. Don't let that tone change your path that you are on. You relapsed, you had a setback. Accept what you did wrong. Because at some point, you made a wrong turn and you did make a wrong choice. Somewhere that led you to relapsing. I cannot tell you what that choice is. I cannot tell you where you went wrong, what you did wrong. You have to look into your life as far back as the year before you relapsed or start journaling what you did for the year before you relapsed and what led to your relapse. Remember as much as you can of your daily activities. Did you change routine? Did you change who you hung out with? Did you change the places you went to? Did your job change? Did school change? Your emotions? Did you break up with someone? Did your family treat you a certain way? Was it shame? Was it guilt? Was it the pandemic? A lot of people relapsed during this pandemic when they lost their job, when they were stuck at home, when they were stressed. You need to figure out why you relapse. Tell the truth. Whatever the truth is, was it cravings? Was it a trigger? Were you bored? A lot of addicts, they don't understand that it's boredom that led them to relapse. And then you start thinking, okay? You start remembering the old days. You start remembering the party days. You start remembering setting it up. You start remember pulling it up. You remember shooting it up. You remember snorting it. You remember breaking it up. You remember. You remember the fun. You remember the good times. You remember being busy all the time. You remember always going out, getting the money, getting the drugs. You just remember always having something to do. What you need to remember also, remember the bad times. Remember the withdrawals. Remember the sickness. Remember waiting hours on the dope man. Remember shitting yourself waiting on the dope man. Remember puking in your car puking on the bus, puking on the sidewalk, waiting for the dope man. Remember losing your kids? Remember losing your family? Remember losing your job? Remember losing your home? Remember having no food to eat? Remember going into depression? Remember starving yourself? Remember suffering from dehydration? Remember getting sick, like actual sickness, because your immune system is shot to hell? Remember the anxiety? Remember the scars and sores on your face, remember your teeth hurting, remember your hair falling out, remember having no clothes, having no shoes, having no money, and any money you did have only went to drugs, remember how hard it is to find a needle, remember how hard it is to find a straw, if that's how you do it, remember getting robbed, remember people turning their back on you, remember being so sick, waiting on people to come through with drugs, and they don't care about you, remember waking up sick, 
remember waking up just so sick from withdrawals remember that remember the pain remember the aches in your bones remember sitting up and just wishing you would die because you don't want to live through this any longer remember looking your kids in the eyes having them tell you i miss you i want to go to the park well mommy doesn't have money mommy can't mommy has to go i'll be right back remember leaving them alone so you could go get high or so you could go get drugs remember Remember stealing from your family. Remember stealing from stores. Remember doing illegal pawning. Remember stealing from your friends and using someone else's ID to pawn so it can't be put onto you. Remember sneaking into places covering your face. Remember the feeling of looking over your shoulder because you think cops are after you or you think the dope man's after you or you think someone down the street is after you because you did them wrong. Remember getting assaulted for drugs. Remember getting raped because you were trying to get money and he took advantage of you. Remember the bad times? When you remember the good fun times when you're bored. Remember everything, not just what you want, not just the easy parts. Remember the hard parts. When you're bored and you're about to relapse, remember the hard parts, the hard life that comes with addiction. Admit to yourself the truth and learn to fix the issue. Learn how to cope with triggers, learn how to cope with cravings, learn how to deal with your depression, learn how to deal with your anxiety without the use of drugs. This is vital, okay, in sobriety. The key to not relapsing is not only admitting that you are an addict and that you lost control and you gave in to the addiction and the dependence, Another key is learning your triggers, learning when you have a craving, learning what your body is telling you. Learn the subconscious tell signs that your body gives you because your body does subconsciously and consciously. You do things when you're triggered and when you're craving and you need to learn it. When I am talking, maybe filming a video, or whenever I'm journaling, when something is becoming too difficult for me to, to think about, even in these videos, you'll see me playing with my hair. Well, la da 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 Or I'm playing with my fingers. la da 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 la da 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 That is my sign that I need to back off. That's my body subconsciously trying to cope with the trauma I am reliving or the stress that I'm that's being brought on to me. That's what I mean by learning your body. And if all that fails, meaning you don't learn what your triggers are and, and you're in a weakened state and you relapse, or you do learn and you still relapse for whatever reason, do not beat yourself up. So many addicts will relapse and the guilt and the shame will eat at them and they will just go further, further, further down in this cycle of addiction because they're so ashamed to come up and say, hey, I relapsed. So instead they hide it and they bury it with more drugs and they bury it with more lies and they bury it with more manipulation because they're so ashamed and they're so scared to tell anybody because one, they don't want to lose everything. They don't want to admit. We think, addicts think, oh, if I don't tell anybody, I'll stop it. I'll stop tomorrow. Just one more time. Just one more hit. Let me wean myself off. I know that's one y'all have heard. I'll just wean off. I'll do a little bit each day until I get off. If I don't tell them, they won't find out. I'll get off and I'll be okay. That's a lie. That will not happen. We're scared we're going to lose our home, lose our car, lose our job, lose our kids. We're scared people are going to come in and as a punishment, take everything from us because we relapsed. Instead of coming in with love and helping us, people punish us. We are terrified to lose everything again. A relapse requires you to have gotten sober. A relapse requires you to have already taken the necessary steps to better your life. And for you to have gotten sober, that requires you to have admitted the truth and start finding ways to fix the issues and find out what caused you to use drugs in the first place. If you just 
stop using for a few months, but you're not actively sober, like you're not trying to be sober, you weren't sober. You were just not using. Know the difference between a true relapse and you going on benders or binges. Before I got sober in 2017, now I was what I called a binge user. Meaning when I started using drugs, that entire time I never once got sober. I would just use and then I would stop for a while. Then I would start using again. Then I would stop for a while. And then I would get really, really sick and either A, I would run out of money or B, I would get sick of living it. I exhausted my resources, I burned every bridge I had, and I had no way to get any more money. So I was forced to not use drugs. So when you relapse, you need to admit to yourself, am I really relapsing? Am I a binge user? Am I, did I ever truly get sober or did I just stop using drugs? I'll repeat it for you. Getting sober requires you to admit you're an addict and actively get and be better. Not using drugs does not equate to being sober. I'll say it again for y'all. Not using drugs does not equate to being sober. And that's something you need to figure out yourself. I can't tell you. Only you know your body, you know your life, you know your story, you know your truth. Unless somebody has a severe mental disability, um, like a severe developmental or cognitive disability where they truly don't know right from wrong, most people know their truth. They just don't want to admit it. But they know right from wrong. They know the wrong shit they've done. They know the good shit they've done. They know what they're doing that's wrong. They're, they just don't want to admit it. And that's okay. That's normal. And that's another thing. It is normal to be scared to admit your faults. It's in the world, people think punishing people and disciplining people is the way to get people to change for the better. And it's not. All discipline and punishment does is teach people how to hide what they're doing wrong. There are some exceptions where some people, they don't like being punished enough to where they do better things. Sure, but a lot of people, especially when it comes to addiction, if you punish an addict, if you discipline an addict, it'll just teach them how to do it differently. It'll teach them how to hide it better. It'll teach them how to lie better. It'll teach them how to manipulate better. That's why I'm not a fan of putting addicts in jail. That's a different story, okay? I'm talking about relapsing. Anyway, just because you relapse, you're not a bad person. It is so scary. It's terrifying. Like I said, America... We love to punish people, and it is terrifying to think if I admit I relapse, I will be punished. I feel like, as an addict, when I admit that I relapsed, I feel like I'm giving away my control. Like, you can walk in here and take everything away from me. Like, my parents can take my kids. They can kick me out because I have nothing of my own. And very few addicts will have stuff of their own. There are some functional addicts. I, I am one of the people, I believe, people can be a functional addict, meaning they can go to work, they can have their own home, pay their own bills. As an addict, it usually doesn't last long because eventually they will get worn out and they'll choose one or the other, either addict life or the responsible life working and paying bills. Usually an addict will choose the addict life until they're sick of living it and then they'll choose to get sober because they're sick of living that life. They're sick of losing everything. Rarely what I've seen, and I've known a lot of addicts, I've helped a lot of addicts get to treatment centers, rarely will, will an addict choose to get sober before they hit rock bottom because addiction takes hold of you in a way you cannot simply walk away from. You tell yourself, I'm not going to lose everything. You tell yourself you'll quit, but you don't. Now, I'm not... I don't, I know it's going to seem as if I'm not placing responsibility on an addict. That's not what I'm saying. Because it's the addict's responsibility to stay sober. It is their responsibility to figure out their triggers, to figure out their craving signs, and their responsibility to get help. 100% I agree with that. It is an addict's responsibility to get help and to get better. But when they don't know how to, 
when they don't know how to, they don't know where to go, and they don't know how to look for the signs, how are they supposed to get help? We've got to stop blaming addicts and stop scaring them because an addict who is scared will never come clean and they will never get sober because they're terrified and they don't know how to handle that. So I'm here to tell you as an addict who has relapsed, you're worthy of treatment and you deserve treatment. It doesn't matter if you've relapsed 20 times, if you've only relapsed once. It does not matter how many times you relapsed. Nobody is better than you because of that. And don't ever let this world tell you you're a worse person than somebody else because you've relapsed. Because that will bury a hole in your mind, in your emotional well-being. And that little hole, that little nest egg of negativity is all there needs to be. For something to just dig in your soul and, and rip you to shreds. Don't let this world bring you down because they will. Do you know how many times ever since I started my little videos on YouTube and I get what 10 views like I, I'm nothing special okay but the amount of messages I've gotten especially on my methadone and pregnant video people calling me a monster People saying I'm not truly sober because I'm on methadone. I can't, whatever, dude. Y'all say what y'all want. I don't let that bother me because I can't let it bother me. I can't. If I let that bother me, I will never get to where I need to be and to where I want to be. I will be stuck forever. And I don't want to be stuck where I am. I want to be better and I want to be bigger and I want to be stable. And I'll never get there by listening to the negativity of the world because the world loves to put other people down and who's the easiest to put down an addict why because people see addiction as a choice they don't see it as a mental illness they don't see it as a disease they see it as a choice you're making and what happens when someone chooses a bad path in life it's easy to put them down you chose that I don't need to feel sympathy for you people do not see addiction for the true mental illness that it is because it's easier for them to disregard addicts. You cannot say addiction is a mental illness and then in the same breath say it's your choice. Forget you. I have no sympathy for you. No. So what happens? They say addiction is not a mental illness. It's a choice. They make it easier on themselves. That's what the world does. And you cannot let that hurt you. You cannot let it tear you down. When you are an addict in recovery, we have to help each other. We have to work with each other. We have to put each other up, build each other up. We have to rely on each other because nobody knows what an addict is going through besides another addict. Nobody will ever understand why I made the choices I made except for another addict. If you're an addict and you have relapsed, keep going. Keep going. You got this. You relapsed. Admit it. Get help to get better. Figure out why you relapsed. And fix the problem. Change your lifestyle. Because one thing I know for a fact, if you don't change your life, if you don't change your lifestyle, if you don't change your surroundings, you will not change for the better. You cannot change if you're doing the same things. Well, even if you stop doing it, you cannot hang around people who are stealing and robbing just because you say, well, I'm not doing it, but you're sitting there beside them. Cops don't care. They're going to arrest you. You're in the car. Oh, but they're in there robbing the bank. I'm just sitting out here. I'm minding my own business. They don't care. You better hop out that car and run away, and you better say, I don't want no part of this. Change your friends, change your lifestyle, change your habits, change your environment, change everything. If you have to up and move to a different city and go live in a shelter for a year while you get a new job and rebuild, you better do that. You, and that's what I mean by not using drugs doesn't equate to being sober. You can't just not get high and say, oh, I'm better. It's more than that. It is a 
lifestyle, it's a mindset. And then once you change everything, learn who you are as a person. If you are an addict who relapsed, learn who you are, learn your soul, learn your mind, learn your body like nobody will ever know your body. You need to be the master of your mind, of your soul, of your body. You need to be the master. You need to have the key. Learn to walk away from the negative. Learn to walk away from the bad people in your life. If you're an addict who relapsed, know this. You do not owe anyone an explanation. You don't owe your kids an explanation. You don't owe your therapist an explanation. You don't owe your parents an explanation. You do not owe anyone, your partner. It does not matter to anybody else. You matter in your own mind. Get better. That is it. It doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out, you know, five-hour conversation. It doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out intervention. Just, man, I messed up. Let me figure out why I messed up and get better. If you are an addict who has relapsed, just know you're not alone. You are not alone. It may feel like it. It feels like it. When you relapse, you... When you relapse, it's hard because you feel so alone. You feel like nobody will ever, ever know the hate you feel towards yourself. Nobody will ever feel this sadness I am feeling. Nobody will ever feel how alone I am feeling in this moment. After you shoot up, after you snort it, and you're coming down from it, and you kind of realize what just happened. However long, however much you used, whether it was one dose or you did it for a whole night, whole week, then you're coming down from it and you're realizing like, shit, I really did just did that. Like I'm no longer sober. That is a feeling of isolation I cannot put into words. Looking in the mirror at yourself and accepting I am no longer sober I will fail a drug test? That is a different level of getting real with yourself. That is because it's not just I'm not, no longer sober. It's like betraying everybody. It's betraying everybody, you know. It's betraying your kids, especially. That is a different kind of guilt and a different kind of shame. But no, you're not alone in feeling that because I'm, I'm right there with you. I feel it. I have felt it. And I may feel it again in my lifetime. I, I don't know. I hope I never do. All I can tell you, you know, if you're an addict who relapsed and you are fighting with the realization that you are not sober because you relapsed, just know you can get sober again. As quick as the realization was that you are no longer sober, that quickly you can realize, I'm going to be sober. And just as quick as you can make the choice to get sober, your life can change again for the better. You can choose that. You relapsed. It happens. Addicts relapse. You're not the worst person to have ever lived just because you relapsed. You're not a horrible demon child because you relapsed. You're not a bad parent because you relapsed. Listen. Now, I'm not talking about using in front of your children and bringing your children to a drug deal. That is another thing. What I'm talking about is just relapsing in itself does not make you a bad parent. And don't let the world, because there's probably going to be some comments up on here. Well, if you relapse, you are a bad parent. Don't be like, no, you're, you're not. You're a troubled parent. You're a parent with an addiction. People equate addiction with being a bad person. And that has to stop. Just like I said earlier, just because you use drugs does not make you a bad person. Just because you get sober doesn't mean you're a good person. Just because you've ever used drugs doesn't mean you're a good person. Okay? People equate drugs with being a bad person. And it's not okay to do so. We can change that stigma. 
The only way to change it is to get up and raise our voice. Like Hilary Duff, he, you know, anyway. <laughs> this means more to me than just saying I'm a good person. My name is The Addict Mom. I'm a mom. And I'm an addict. And I know I'm a good mom. I have my issues. I'm bipolar. I'm depressed. I have anxiety. I am an addict. I have PTSD. But I'm a good person and I'm a good mother. I'm a damn good mother. I was not always and I can admit that. And you can be. If you feel you're not a good parent right now because you're an addict, because you do things that are not good, just like I did, you can change it. If you're an addict and if you relapsed, change it. Accept it. Don't beat yourself up. Don't let the shame eat you. You can get sober. It's not going to be easy. It may be even more difficult this time around because you have more shame. You may feel you're too far gone. You may feel, what's the point? Even I can't, I can't do this. You know how many times I've sat here I, I, and I tell myself, I cannot do this. I cannot be sober. I can't be a functioning adult. I cannot contribute to society. I can't do this. And look at me. I'm here. I'm in college. I'm a mom. I clean my home. I cook for my kids. I am making videos that I know will help somebody somewhere at some time. It may not be for five years. <laughs> somebody may not watch this for five years, but I know somebody will watch this and it will help them. That's me contributing. And if you're not, like if you genuinely feel like you're not doing what you could be to contribute to society, Go volunteer at a homeless shelter. Go volunteer at the Humane Society. Go up to the school and give them uh, donations of food. Go donate clothes. Go help mow someone's yard. Go, help, go clean their house. You know, there's always something you can do if you feel like you're not doing enough. If you have the opportunity to go back to school, like if you're able to, do it. Get a job in human services. Get a job helping people. You can do it. I know it me telling you you can do it it's not going to help you maybe if you watch this every time you feel down every time you feel trapped every time you feel like you cannot do it watch this and hear me tell you yes you can do this i'm here to help all the addicts who are hopeless who are helpless who don't know how they're going to get up and walk across that sh threshold from relapsing to being sober once again. Once you relapse and you get sober again, it's a whole new journey. You don't have to go back to the same journey that was before, because obviously if you relapse, something in that sobriety journey before did not work. It's your responsibility and you owe it to yourself to figure out what didn't work and where it went wrong and make it better and be better. You can. You just got to really think hard, okay, y'all? So, make wise choices, make good decisions, and don't forget to DM me or email me if you want me to talk about anything in specific or if you have any stories or any life experiences you want me to share with the world. All right, y'all. I'll see you later. Bye.